Yeah, this is a lot of dead bees all of a sudden. Huh. That's a lot of dead bees. Just trying to figure out what triggered this. There's definitely uh, lots of poop everywhere. But, uh, and I would say they came out of this hive. I see poop all over the place. Now it's possible that this is just their first major cleansing flight of the year for whatever reason. Um, let's just see. Oh yeah, they're still, they're in there. And they're not pooping inside the hive. I'm just sticking with. Oh, it smells really nice. You can smell a healthy hive. So there's poop everywhere and I would say a few hundred dead bees there. And I hope that's okay. I hope that's nothing abnormal. Boy, let's poop. Look at this. Yeah, they're everywhere. This must have been a good pooping day. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes it's so strong you can smell it. It just stinks. Like that's a lot of poop. But uh, it's okay. It's also possible they're pooping uh, a little more than usual because I gave them a pollen patty uh, a couple of weeks ago. And now they got all these solids inside them and they had to get it out. And so they died. So, I mean, is this uh, one of the downsides to uh, feeding pollen too early, too early in the season? I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to look that one up. But, uh, yeah, it looks like a lot. It looks pretty bad, but I think it's, even if it's just, uh, you know, how many bees? I would say, I don't know, I mean, it's hard to guess, but I'd say a couple, two or three hundred bees, maybe? It sounds like a lot, but it's it's uh, considering that there's still probably, I don't know, 20,000 bees or so in there. It's, uh, you know, a few hundred isn't really a big deal. But, yeah. Look at that. That's a lot of bees. A lot of dead... Uh, I've never seen it quite this extensive before. Like this many dead bees uh, close together in the snow like that too. The only other time I've seen something like that was when the bees were stressed by uh, a shrew getting to the, into the hive. They just get in, they get stressed, and they freak out, and they all come out and they die. But these ones also... But they just die in the snow, but these ones look like they're actually uh, pooping as well so anywho I will take a quick look at them tomorrow because it's freezing right now uh, anyway it's interesting I guess uh, to be continued Okay, this probably isn't a good idea, but I'm going to take a quick look, just a really quick peek inside this hive. Um, the morning after I notice all this mess on the, on the ground here. Uh, it's, we got a blowy, snowy storm coming in, and it's not, this is not a good idea to do this right now, but I'm going to be very quick. Just going to just see if there's anything funky going on. I was talking to a beekeeper online a couple days ago who was, we were talking about dysentery. He brought up the possibility of dysentery, um, how it sometimes drives the bees out of the hive in the middle of, on a cold day. And I don't know a lot about dysentery. I really haven't had much to do with it. I haven't had to deal with it over the years too often. So I don't think it's dysentery or anything like that, but uh, I think it's just one big massive cleansing flight and they all got cold and died. Um, but again, it's only a couple hundred bees, two or three hundred bees, whatever, and... Um, there's probably, I don't know, 15 or 20,000 bees in there by now, at least. So, you know, it's not really, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I'm just going to open it up just to take a whiff of the hive because uh, I forgot about that. But yeah, I guess uh, taking a whiff of the hive is a good sense of, you get a sense of the health of the hive. If there's dysentery or anything else happening inside the hive, if there's poop in the hive, you're going to smell it. It's going to stink. And I don't smell anything. I smell poop over there, but I don't smell any poop inside the hive. So I'm just going to take a quick look to see what's going on, just to see if there's anything weird going on, if there's any sign of a shrew or a mouse in there. And then I'm going to take a whiff, but I'm not really... It's going to be very minimal. 
And the hardest part will be actually undoing this ratchet strap because if you do it, you gotta go click, right? And just that click alone is enough to put a, some vibrations into the hive and, and stir up the bees. Uh, and then once you, you lock it up, it's just a click, 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 click nonsense and it just again rattles and vibrates into the hive and that's the that's the worst part of these uh, these rat straps and that's why I want to try to get out of them just use uh, sports straps anywho I'm gonna pull the top off just because there's a bit of weight to it actually you know I don't even need to do this well I can see what's going on down there They look okay to me. I'm gonna be really quick with this because I really don't want to let out the heat. Oh, they look fine. Totally fine. A little bit of poop over there, but that was nothing. Yep, they smell good. They smell really good. Let me just take a whiff. See, now I'm getting paranoid. Is that, is that, is that a poopy smell I smell? I don't think so. Let me just smell. No, it's okay. I think they're fine. It's hard to say now, I'm getting paranoid, but I think that's basically what I'm smelling is, uh, um, that was the uh, alarm pheromone, I guess. They weren't happy with me farting with them. So I'm just gonna put the top back on, keep the heat back in there, and I think they're gonna be fine. They, they look like they have lots of honey too. So I'm really not too concerned about them. They've got a rim in there so that if I need to put sugar, or pollen in at some point I can but um, I thought maybe I put a pollen patty in there but I hadn't so none of this is the result of me giving them solids when they couldn't handle the solids so anyway um, I'll come out later on because the Sun isn't out so the Sun's not going to heat up this hive and I'll come out later on with my um, my thermal imaging camera and just see what I see but I've got a feeling I'm just gonna see a cluster right about there which is pretty good for this time of year actually and I got one, two, three. So this one has four uh, mediums on it. This one has three, and that one has three. And this one, I think, is looking the best of all of them. Um, it's, they're just sort of starting to come over the, the top, over the top bars, but not really. Um, there's, I put sugar in there, but they're not touching it. So they're they're still they they're doing really good for honey. Um, I've got another one on the farm that's pretty much in the same shape as that. This one is a. Uh, doing pretty good too. That one I'm not so sure about. Um, and that one is, I think, in pretty good shape too. Um, I can't remember. I, I looked into them a little while ago. I think I gave them some sugar and some pollen. And they're, uh, I think they had plenty of honey. I gotta have to check my records, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing thick combs of honey. So overall, my bees are doing, I think, and they're in pretty good shape. So it's funny too how much time, how much we worry about our bees and um, and 90% of the time you just leave them alone they're fine you know they, if, they, if they if you gave them all the honey and syrup or whatever they needed before spring or before the winter kicked in then that's all you got to worry about just just as long as they don't starve as long as they're, they're you know that's the main thing you got to worry about anyway um, but most commercial beekeepers that I know they don't they're not farting with their hives in the winter time they they'll give them a wrap they may check them on a warm day just to see if some of them are running low on honey but I think most commercial beekeepers they just top up their hives before winter and then forget about them they just leave them alone and they either the, the hives live or die and they don't they don't go in and do any kind of you know drastic measures to keep them alive <clears throat> I don't think so anyway uh, anyway there's so nothing I think it's just uh, um, just uh, it was just a massive uh, cleansing flight yesterday and a lot of them died, and so that's fine because you got to get rid of the old dead bees. Although I was looking at the bees too, I took a couple, uh, took a couple of them inside, and and um, they look healthy. They just they didn't look, there's, not, there's nothing unhealthy about them, and they didn't look too old. But again, I'm used to judging older bees by how much of their hair has been worn off, and if their wings are cracked and that kind of thing. But older bees in older winter bees are just older bees that haven't been foraging. They're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna have their their uh, their hair uh, worn off or their fuzz worn off like uh, uh, busy worker bees that are pollinating but it's a good question now I, I wonder if they if all of that pollen gets worn off all of the hair gets worn off 
through rubbing up against pollen and other things outside the hive or if it's if it still happens inside the hive i don't think it happens inside the hive but i don't know could be wrong anyway good enough uh nothing to worry about here okay so now <clears throat> so this is the front of the hive you tell me <laughs> like where's the heat signature in this thing right Side here, not really. Let's go over here. Let's check out this other hive. Now, see, I put the point. I'm not doing anything. <laughs>